This video is a VA tutor tutorial on how to do birds with arms, which is a beginning um, exercise for photo montage. We're going to start with a new file that is named bird with arms or Photoshop practice or something like that. We're going to make our width 7 inches, our height 5 inches, and we're going to make sure resolution is 300. Previous to this, I put in a folder. Um, some of the, let's see here, here we are. I put, I, on Google, I just found some birds that were sort of inspiring. I found some arms that I thought would fit. And so I've got those ready, ready to go to pull into this file. And we're gonna pull them in by placing. So I'm going to file place from that folder. We'll do the owl. And when you place in Photoshop, you hit enter to apply and notice that it creates a new layer. There's a link because it's a placed layer. I need to hover over the name of the layer, right click and choose rasterize layer or Photoshop won't let me do much with that image. <clears throat> I'm going to place the next layer, which is the arms. Every time I um, place in Photoshop, it creates a new layer. I hit enter, it applies and I need to go over to my title, right click, and rasterize the layer. Now, a couple things to remember about Photoshop, when using the Move tool, it's highly helpful to turn on Auto Select. Without Auto Select, <clears throat> you can only click on the layer that's selected. Excuse me. With Auto Select, you can click anywhere you touch will be selected. I'm gonna want to make my owl full size in my background. So I click on my owl, Control T, which gives me my bounding box, and I can hold down shift and stretch my owl to fill the background. And I hit enter to apply. I'm going to do the same with my girl, um, although what I need to do is place her arms over top of my owl where I think they should go. They're a little small, obviously, so I'm going to control T and scale her up, but you'll notice that those arms aren't going to fit across the body. So what I'm going to do is kind of guesstimate one of the arms, and then I'm going to split them in half and then guesstimate the other arm. It's easier to guesstimate where this should go if you can see through the picture. So over here in opacity, I'm going to lower that down. Then I've got a better sense of how that arm is going to fit with the bird, and that looks, that looks probably about the right size. So um, what I'm going to do then is pull my opacity back up so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to use this tool, which is the rectangular marquee tool, to select half of the photo. So once again, make sure you've clicked on that right layer so it's activated. Rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to drag across half of the picture. Now I notice that I moved this up a little too much. So I placed this arm and it's fine, but I'm losing part of her hand here. So I'm going to control D, go back to my move tool and move that down so that I don't cut off the hand. Back again to the rectangle tool drag across the whole picture. It's okay that I've dragged beyond the picture because only what's on this layer will be selected. I'm going to control C to copy and then I'm going to control V. When I do it, watch how another layer is automatically added. If I go to my move tool and move that over, now I've created a copy of what I had just marqueed. I don't need that part of the picture anymore, so I'm going to do that again. Make sure I'm on the right picture, the original picture rectangular marquee, and I'm going to delete. So you can feel free to delete any part of your photo that you don't think you're going to use. So I've dragged and I hit delete. For instance, I know I'm not going to use her head. Delete. I'm not going to use this little part of her body. Delete. Over on this guy, I can do the same thing. Dragging, delete. And to get rid of my dancing ants again, I control D. Now I've got independent arms. Oops, left out a little part there. That's okay. We'll get that in a minute independent arms that I can place on my owl. Now what I need to do is make the rest of the arm disappear, right? So I, I can do that with the delete boxes like I was doing, but it gets pretty choppy. I could use the eraser tool. Mm, that's interesting. I can use the eraser tool and I can certainly erase away, but I want you guys to use a more sophisticated tool. So if you know you're never going to use parts, go ahead and use the eraser. But what I'd like you to use instead of the eraser, especially when you're getting in right here around the arms, is what's called a masking tool. And we're going to paint brush with the masking tool. So I'm going to select this arm first. 
I'm going to, on that layer palette, move to the bottom and click on the white rectangle with the gray circle. And when I do that, it makes this little the little, yeah, this little thumbnail that's a layer mask thumbnail. See how it has a white bracket around it when I click on it? If I click here, I'm on the original picture. If I'm here, I'm on the mask. Now, in order to use the mask, you need to use one of your tools, and we're going to use the paintbrush tool. If I, oh goodness, sorry about that. If I start to paint, nothing's happening, and I'm thinking, wait, this isn't working. With masking, you need to make sure your foreground color is set on black. And I always tell students, remember, when you're masking, turn on black as if you're putting something over your head, like a mask over your head. It goes dark. So dark is hide. Let me move my opacity up here. Dark is hide. It's going to hide anything I paint. If I make a mistake and I flip back to white, white will reveal what I erased. That's why this tool is so amazing. You are not going to destroy any pixels. You're just going to hide them. So I'm going to go back to black, and I'm going to start to paint away around my girl. You can feel free to use your tablet and your stylus to do this if you have more control. And obviously, I'm trying to get nice and tight in here on the arm. What you should probably do is use your Alt-Zoom a lot. Use your right-click brush size a lot. And you're going to kind of play around with how much do I blend when I erase right next to the arm. If you use your hard edge, it might look a little choppy, so that arm looks like obviously photoshopped. But if you use sort of the blurry edge, it might look a little more believable as it blends into the background. So what I'm going to do is pause the video for just a second, and I'm going to erase out most of this. And we're going to come back and talk about how to blend the arm. Okay, so as you can see, I have uh, masked out. You can see right there. Where there's black, it's hidden. Where there's white, it's revealed. Masked out most of the green behind the arm, and now I've got to deal with this area. So what I need to do here is use a brush <clears throat> that's fuzzy so that I can softly erase, but I don't want to erase all of it. I don't really want her um, necklace here, so I can probably go ahead and get that out. But I want to fade it gradually into the arm. So not only can I use that fuzzy brush, but I can go right up here above and lower opacity of the brush and the mask and lower the flow, which will kind of slow it down. The more you rub, the more it will go away, or the little bit will make it a little more gradual. So I can kind of softly make it fade. Now I can see I went a little too far there, so I'm going to flip back to white, get that to come back. And I have a problem, because I've got that darn leaf there. So here's where we're going to use another tool. This is called the Clone Stamp Tool. I am going to make the right size brush, first of all. I don't know why these are so huge. I'm going to make a fuzzy brush. And what I do is I click on the area that looks like the way I want it to look. So this is kind of her shoulder. It's a little brighter, but here I want maybe this skin tone. I hold down Alt and I click. And then I let go of Alt and my mouse. And what it's done is it has... Hmm, it has done nothing. I think I have messed up. It should, I'll back it up there, it should have copied from the skin and pasted it there, and I'm not sure why it's not working. Oh, I know why it's not working. I know exactly why it's not working. It's because I'm in mask mode. See right here? I have the mask selected. Back it up. Head back to the original thumbnail. Try it again. Alt, click. Then, when I let go and I drag forward, can you see there's like a little cross that's following my circle. The circle is where I'm pasting information. The cross is where I'm pasting from. So I'm just extending that skin. So this would work if you've got wrinkles or flyaway hair or if you want to extend the grass or something. And so now I've extended that skin and I've kind of gotten rid of the necklace. Now I go back to mask mode. Hello. Now I go back to brush, go back to mask, and I'm going to like very, very carefully start to blend that skin back in to the fur. Fur. Feathers. I can take my move tool and I can kind of move this around so you can see some parts that don't look so great. So I might need to kind of play with that again. But I'm just kind of gradually fading. Now, when I'm using Photoshop, I zoom in and out a lot so that I can kind of see 
you know what it looks like from distance here. Maybe it's close, maybe it doesn't look that awesome, but when I zoom out, it looks fairly believable. So that's basically what you're going to do. Separate out your arms, erase away by deleting, grabbing rectangles, what you don't need. Make sure you're on the right layer. Um, but better is to add a mask on those layers, go to your brush, make sure you have black, and paint away, let's move opacity back up, paint away what you don't want. Carefully move all the way around. If you need to use the clone stamp tool, do so anywhere, really on your design. And then um, you're going to gradually blend fur into arm. That's our main goal. I'm going to pause one more time. And okay, so now I've got my bird with its little arms. Um, this is really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a bird with realistic looking arms that blend into the bird. If you want to go ahead and put it in a new background, you'd be clicking on that background layer and you'd be adding a mask and you can make that background disappear the same way we were. You know, just erase that out and uh, add something behind the bird if you want to, but you certainly don't have to. Um, but this is what I'm looking for for the practice. You're going to make sure you finish it and put it in your portfolio.